Okay, in chat, which one does not belong? Okay, I like that answer. I can come up with another one that doesn't belong. Or I can talk about C being another reason why C does not belong. Okay, um, C does not belong because it's the only figure with a right angle. Another thing you can say is that A, B, and D are all similar. Um, and they are basically, to me, these are just rotations or re reflections from each other. And I could actually, I'll probably say congruent because they're just rotations and reflections, same size, same shape. So you can say that, hey, C is not good because it has a right angle and none of the others do. But there's something, I would say all three of A, B, and D um, are equilateral triangles. That means they have three sides that are the same length that they kind of look like that to me. Can somebody tell me a reason why if I were looking at this, I would tell you that D is the one that does not belong. Can anybody come up with a reason why D does not belong? And you can see Mr. Taylor's demented thinking when I give you my answer. Why would Mr. Taylor say D does not belong? So here's what I'm thinking. See this point? See this point? See this point? I'm thinking that those three triangles all have points up at the top of the triangle that are pointing up. And D doesn't have any points on the top of the triangle that are pointing up. So there's Mr. Taylor's demented math thinking for the day. Our correct answer was C, which is because the other three are similar or congruent. If you actually went out and measured them, they would be congruent to each other. So nobody put anything into burning questions. I am going to walk through my thought process on the homework that you guys had assigned over the weekend. And again, this is just to show you how I would go about doing this homework. Um, let me move my picture over a little bit so I can write some more stuff over here. Anytime that I'm given a figure that I want to move, they only give you blocks to draw the two transformations. I always write down the original coordinates. So one thing that I always do, if I'm gonna be doing any sort of transformation where they're gonna want coordinates for the end numbers, I always write the original coordinates. So remember that our X coordinate comes first, then our Y coordinate when we write down points. So A is at one comma two, B is at two comma five, and C is at seven comma one. And then I read through carefully to make sure that I'm gonna do my transformations in order. It says dilate it with a scale factor of two with the center at the origin. So anytime I'm doing a dilation where they give you a scale factor that is centered at the origin, all you do is you multiply the original coordinates by your scale factor. So I'm gonna multiply everything in ABC by two. So my new points are gonna be at two comma four, four comma 10, and 14 comma two. So I'm gonna have two comma four, four comma 10, and 14 comma two. And unfortunately, I do not have a straight line tool on the Jamboard. So I'm gonna to try to make it look as good as I can. 
There we go. And I'm going to label them A prime, B prime, and C prime. And then the next step, it is telling me to translate the image four units up. Well, up is my Y numbers. So I'm going to add four to my Ys. So the X's stay the same, two, four, and 14. And then the Y's go to eight, 14, and six. Two comma eight, four comma 14, and then 14 comma six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, try to make straight lines. And my final points are A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. Are there any questions how I came up with my numbers for question number one from the homework? The reason why I'm doing these homework questions is last homework, they gave you a series of transformations to do, and then um, you drew them and came up with points. Today's stuff, they're going to give you the beginning and the end, and you've got to kind of tell them what, how could I get from the original to the new, okay? So you seeing me actually do these, can help you kind of think about how would I do them backwards. So that's why I'm doing all these homework questions for you. I'm going to drop, slide the picture over a little bit, add my original coordinates, because it's always nice to know where you started from, especially since one of the ways I do some of the things is by actually just doing math on the coordinates. D is at six comma three. Um, so this is D, E, F, G. So six, three. E is at nine, three. F is at nine, 12. And since it's a rectangle, it's probably at six, 12. Yep, 6, 12. They say to reflect the rectangle across the y-axis. Okay? So what that means is this middle line that I'm going to dot in with the icky yellow, I'm reflecting it across that vertical line. So anything that was to the right of the vertical line is going to be that many units to the left of the vertical line. So one way I could get my new points is like for point D, I'd count over one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six to the right, so I now need to go one, two, three, four, five, six to the left. And that would give me my D prime. And that's at negative six, three. Well, my preferred way, if I'm doing a reflection across one of the axes, is we have a rule that said um, that when we covered reflections, that said if I take my original x, y, and if I'm reflecting across the y axis, all I have to do is negate my original x and keep the old y the same. Um, as you do these reflections, understanding the math behind them could actually help speed things up in the long run for you instead of having to draw the picture. There's nothing wrong with drawing the picture, but to me, it's the way I would do it was just do the math. So it says to take every one of my X numbers and change its sign. So that would be negative nine, negative nine, negative six, and keep the Y numbers the same. Three, 12, 12. So I want to go over to negative nine. That's E prime. I want to go negative nine, 12. That's F prime. 
And negative nine, I mean, negative six, 12 is G prime. This one's gonna be easier to draw the shape because I'm drawing lines. And then the last thing it says to dilate it with the center at the origin with a scale factor of one third. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply everything by one third. Multiplying by one third, for those of you that don't have the math thinking squared away, it's the same thing as dividing by three. Um, my preferred way is just saying like this, multiplying by one third, you can think of it as dividing by three. Every single number you're gonna do that to. So divide negative six by three, I get negative two. Negative three divided by three is one. Negative nine turns into negative three. Three turns into one. Negative nine turns into th negative three. 12 turns into four. Negative six turns into negative two. 12 turns into four. Plot my new points at negative two, one. Negative three, one. Negative three, four. And negative two, four. And so they know I didn't do any other types of reflections. Mark the final points, E double prime. F double prime and G double prime. Again, I'm looking in chat to see if there are any questions on that. Okay, number three. Rotate X, Y, Z 90 degrees clockwise about the origin to form triangle X prime, Y prime, Z prime. So you guys should know my first thing I'm gonna do is write my original coordinates down. It doesn't tell you to do that, but to me it's nice and handy, especially um, on the rotations, I like to have them. So that's X, Y, Z. X is at negative two, two. Y is at negative four, two. And Z is at negative two, six. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just look at my triangle. My triangle looks like this. And if I'm doing a 90 degree clockwise rotation, that means it's gonna rotate this way one quarter of a turn. So that means my new triangle has to look like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm looking here. If I look at what, what axis do I see right here on underneath this triangle right here is this one. That's my negative X axis. And when I rotate it 90 degrees, it becomes my Y axis. So my new Y is my old negative X axis. If I look at this one right here, and rotate it 90 degrees, it now becomes that axis. My old Y, when I rotate it 90 degrees, becomes my positive X axis. So one way you can do the rotation is just understand where your coordinate axes shift to so you can just copy things down. Or you can look at where your original drawing was kind of draw a rough drawing what the new one is and then try to play around with it. To me, if you could logically think about where the old axis goes to the new axis, it makes it a lot easier. What this is telling me is my first coordinate is just going to be copying the old Y numbers down. So I'm going to copy a two, a two, and a six. My new second number is going to be the opposite of what the original X was. The opposite of negative two is a positive two. The opposite of a negative four is a positive four. And the opposite of a negative two is a two. So I'm going to plot two, 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 four, six, two. And if I Connect these things with lines. 
Before I write down my coordinates, I make sure that it matches what my rough drawing was. I want to make sure it looks like what I think it's going to look like. And then the next one, it says to dilate it with a scale factor of one half with the center at the origin. And that's the key point. The only reason why I'm able to multiply these coordinates by the scale factor is because the center of dilation is the origin. So if I multiply by one half, that's the same thing as dividing each thing by two. I am going to, let's do green this time. Two divided by two is one. Two divided by two is one. Two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. Two divided by two is one. So I'm going to plot one, 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 two, and three, one. And I get this little teeny tiny triangle here where I have X double prime, Y double prime, and Z double prime. Rotations are because of needing to think how your coordinate axes are changing. Uh, rotations can be the hardest ones to remember the mathematical rules. I don't memorize the mathematical rules for rotations. I look at the picture and actually do like I did here. This green line that was horizontal now becomes the new Y axis. I think about it every single time I do a rotation. That way I don't have to pulse. And number six it says, Anna solved the problem reflecting ABC across the X axis to form a new triangle. Then she dilated it with a scale factor of two. Explain and correct the mistakes shown in her work. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the one we reflected across the Y axis. And that would have been this one right here. When I reflect something across the Y axis, the Y coordinate stays the same. And then the X coordinate is negative. If I reflect something across the X axis, the X coordinate is going to stay the same. And then the Y coordinate will change its sign. So if I reflect in the Y axis, that means Y is the same. And then the X goes to a negative X. If I reflect across the x-axis, it stays the same, and then the y changes its sign. So if you look at the work she did, the she kept the y's the same. Okay, and then she negated the x's. That she gave you a reflection across the y-axis instead of the x-axis. Okay, so if I want to fix it, all I have to do is I need to change which ones are negated. So instead of being negative two, one, all of these negative signs here would go away. And then all of these would become negative signs. So that's the first mistake she made. And then it says dilate it with a scale factor of two. She did the multiplying by two correct with her numbers. But because she used the wrong numbers in the middle, she just needs to change the signs of those. So that's how um, the two rules that, I, that stick into my head is this one right here, reflecting in the y-axis, the y stays the same. Reflecting in the x-axis, the x stays the same. You could see it when you're looking on a picture, but if you're trying to find out where an error is made, one way I would have done this is I would have followed the instructions from the original um, triangle and then seen where the points I got were. Don't even look at where she got the points. Just do it yourself and then see where the mess up is. And then that's another way you can look at it that way. So that 
should be it for the homework. That was basically your homework. Um, I would like you guys to open your iReady books to page 105. If you don't have the iReady book, the problem's on the board. When you are done figuring out a sequence of transformations that goes from A, B, C, D, going from blue to the purple, um, it says three or fewer transformations. If you can come up with a list of three or fewer transformations that can get me from the blue to the purple, once you're done with that, um, I am starting a poll question. It just launched. Um, you're going to click yes or no. So the poll question says, yes, I figured it out. Uh, when you get done answering this uh, question, go ahead and or trying to figure out this answer, uh, go ahead and click yes in the poll or no in the poll if you couldn't figure it out. And I'll give you a couple minutes to work on this or more. And to find the poll in Google Classroom, I mean, in uh, the Google Meet, it's the triangle square circle icon you either have across the top or in your chat screen area. You click that and then you can click on poll. Half an hour, dog. It's not time for your walk yet. Just get in. No, you're spoiled. Chat. I can guarantee you right now, one of them is going to be a dilation because the two figures are not the same size. So one of them is going to be a dilation. Yeah, somebody's done. Two done. And let me go back through and check attendance while you guys are finishing that up. Okay. Okay, one. Ouch. It's like only half the class is present today.
So one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, 11. There are 11 of you here and two of you say you are done. Three. We get at least two more, then I will uh, continue. There we go. Um, so somebody who clicked yes. Transformations. Anyone that clicked yes. Okay. 180 degree rotation and a half dilation. That's an awesome answer. So if I do the 180 degree rotation, um, I'm going to start out just drawing my figure like that. And with this part being the long point of the thing. So that means if I do a 180, it's going to look like this with the long part being down here. And yep, that kind of matches the picture. But if I do the 180 degree rotation, um, this part's not going to be on the bottom. I would, it would have the figure down here, um, going over to this one would go over three. It, it would look something like this to start out with. And then it said shrink it by half. So then a dilation of one half. So if I go from here to there, and then I shrink it by half. Let's see, the two becomes a one, the four becomes a two, and that would work. Now my question for you, can I do it in the reverse order? Could I shrink it by half first and then do the 180 degree rotation? Can I shrink it by half first and then do 180 degree rotation? I see a yes, so let me, look, let me kind of draw the picture there. If I shrink it by half first, uh, my four becomes a two, my two becomes a one, my four becomes a two, my two becomes a one. Oops, I forgot to shrink my x-axis on these two. And I get this figure, and then I can rotate it that way, and it would work. So a question I have for you, can I always do a sequence of transformations in the reverse order and still get to my new figure? Can I always do a sequence of transformations in the reverse order and get to my new figure? The answer is not always. The ones that will always work are a 180 degree rotation followed by dilation. Um, that one will always work. No, it won't. Because if I do a weird if I do a, so this one, is, this is still sometimes. We just showed that this one will work sometimes. If I would have dilated it by a third, or if I would have doubled it, I would have gotten two different things. So beware. If, 
you have a series of transformations that may not always work. You're going to have to draw them and kind of figure it out. It says, Piler draws rectangle JKLM in the coordinate plane. She performs two transformations on the rectangle to get to the new one. I'm going to, um, what I'd like you to do is think about A and then B and see if uh, your answer will work. I'm going to create a new poll. Created poll. This is on page 108. And the new poll is launched. It says, Yes, I figured it out, or no, I'm stuck for your possible responses to the poll. Figured it out. That's awesome. Lazy dog. Let me go over to the computer so I can see poll results. Got two of you figured it out. Uh, uh. Or we got a stuck. That's fine. You can be stuck. I'm happy with that stuff. It means you're honest. Okay. Big picture here. I'm going with the one without the tick marks to the one with the tick marks. And because there are two tick marks, I'm doing two transformations. And when I look at this, the first thing I ask myself, are they the same size? And if they're not the same size, one of them is going to be a dilation, okay? The other thing I look at is if, if they're in two different quadrants, I kind of ask myself, can one be a reflection of the other? And I'm going to tell you this one cannot be a reflection because if it was a reflection in the top half, my J would be on the bottom, my K would be on the bottom, the L would be on the top, and the M would be on the top. So I'm not, I did not do a reflection, okay? Uh, if I were to do a rotation about this, then my orientation of the J, K, L, and Ms, my, my rectangle would be skinny on the bottom and it would be tall up and down. So it's not a rotation and it's not a reflection. So the only other thing I have was a translation, which will move it. So I kind of try to rule things out. Uh, can somebody please tell me what scale factor you used if you figured it out for the dilation part? One half, just like the last one. So going from two, negative two would go one, negative one. From eight, negative two would go to four, negative one. Um, two negative six would go to one negative three. And since it's a rectangle, I can just plot that fourth point. Okay, so this gives me J prime, K prime, L prime, and then M prime. And then the only thing I have to do to this, if I do the dilation first, so if I do a dilation, Key points about this is it's centered. Let me make it skinnier. 
at origin, scale factor is one half. And then I can do a translation. And I want to figure out how many units up. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Five units up. Does anybody have any questions on that sequence? Go ahead, Tyler, uh, Tyler you're free. And the next one. Can I do the same transformations in the reverse order? Don't just guess, try it. So what I'm gonna do is in red, I'm gonna move the blue figure up five. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So those two points go to here. And then it's normally a four rectangle. So my red one is trying to do the translation first. And then if I do the dilation, you're gonna see that I'm not gonna get what I'm looking for. I'm gonna do the last one in green and I'm not gonna end up on the purple. So at two, three, multiplying it by half gives me one, one and a half. And once I get that first dot, oh no. Yeah, so this dot was supposed to be up here. It didn't work. It's down here. Two negative one gives me actually one negative one half. And then um, eight, three gives me four, one and a half. So it kind of, um, I'll get to the same size at the very end, but I will not be exactly where I was. So to me, the biggest way to explain a question like this is to actually draw and say, hey, I did not end up in the same spot. And our last thing for the day, page 110. It says select all that apply. And um, what you should do is just think, you know, just do part of it and see if it'll work. So I'm going to do a, a 90 degree clockwise rotation followed by a translation to the left. Well, if I do a 90 degree rotation, I'm going from short side up and down, long side on the bottom to short side on the bottom to long side up and down. If I did that rotation of 90 degrees followed by any left or right movement, I would still end up needing the short on the bottom. And I can immediately rule off A will not work. Okay, dilation with the center at the origin followed by a translation down and a translation left. So if I do any dilation, if I look at what the scale factor between the two drawings are, the scale factor would be this side length, which is two, divided by that figure side length, which is four, which is one half. The thing that's gonna happen when I do a dilation is I am going to make it smaller. So two, two becomes one, one. Eight, two becomes four, one. Um, two, six becomes one, three. Now, my question is for B, can I move this down and move it over? Yes, I can. It's, it's gonna be the right size. Next one, a reflection across the x-axis followed by a dilation at the origin and then a translation left. So let me do that one red. Reflection across the x-axis would give me this triangle, I mean rectangle, followed by a dil um, dilation with the center of dilation at the origin, which would give me this rectangle, followed by a translation left. If they also put the words and down, because I have to go over and then down one, uh, this one would be okay. But as written, it will not work. Uh, reflection across the y-axis. So reflection across the y-axis is going to give me this rectangle, um, followed by a translation down. And then I'm going to slide it on down. Um, 
And if I just slide it down, it doesn't matter if I'm sliding this point, any one of this, this side down, and then I multiply it by a half. There, whatever point was here at a negative two is going to end up at a negative one. So it's going to end up having a line over here. So it doesn't matter if I slide it down. I'm not going to be able to end up with that because the dilation is going to move it back towards the origin a little bit. And the last one, 180 degrees about the origin, followed by a translation down and a trans, okay, 180, dilation, down and left. Um, let me see, what can I do here? I can select, I can do, ooh, duplicate, I think, and I think I can bring it to another page. I'm trying to move the picture to the next slide. Let me make the slide first. There we go. So um, I do have my original picture here from um, A through D. And then the last one, 180 degree rotation about the origin. That is going to give me this rectangle right here. So that's the first step. A dilation with the center at the origin is going to turn it into this rectangle right here, followed by a translation down and a translation left. So yes, this goes down one and to the left one. That one will work. So get used to drawing all of these. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that practice is what's going to help you out of this. Um, and your homework for today, let me go ahead and stop the recording.